Sunlust is an expansion for classic Doom created by Zack Stevens and Daniel Jacobson, and it truly is a masterpiece. It's unbelievable how much well-crafted content there is all in one package, and in the spirit of fan-made projects, it's completely free. To better understand why Sunlust is so great, let's retrospect for a minute. Classic Doom is exceptional, and it really deserves that classic title. Like all great classic games, it has responsive controls, fun and challenging gameplay, and charming graphics. <coughs> well, I still think it's charming, okay? A lot of care went into that pixel art. And not only graphics, a great deal of care went into the engine quality. Not to mention, Doom Engine became open source. As a result, that little old baby had a lot of potential from the start. Nowadays, you can install a source port of your liking and have a blast. Even ignoring all the other features, simply raise the frame rate. And the resolution. And you got yourself a cool modern indie game. Very smooth and satisfying to play. But the full potential is not yet realized. I'm talking about the levels. Great games also need great levels. And classic Doom are... They're, they're product of its time. Especially Doom 2. Now of course, in 1994, computers couldn't handle very complex geometry. But it's also the level designers. They were pressed by time, and you can only accomplish so much in less than a year. Sure, you can spice things up with combat, and there is some charm in the simplicity, but you can do much, much better. Case in point, the Sunlust. Now that's what happens when you take talented people and untie their hands a little. First of all, it's 2015 and computers are kinda beefier now, but more importantly, the game is released now, and has been for 20 years, and you are not an id employee. What I mean by all that, there is no deadline, no rush, take your time and make a great polished piece of art. The architecture, the lighting, the little touches here and there. Still blocky, sure, but it fits Doom design perfectly. You quickly forget Doom is supposedly 2D, or 2.5D. Who needs room above rooms anyway, what are you, an apartment building? Just make good levels. Doesn't matter where you go. Small rooms, big rooms, large outdoor areas. They all look interesting and atmospheric. Some levels share similar themes, yet they are all distinct. And never, never do levels make you go through crappy labyrinths. I'm looking at you, classic doom. But enough about looks. How does it play? It plays great. Master placement is clever and encounters are memorable. Yeah, sure, you die a lot and that's how you remember them. But hey, it's not all about the difficulty, it's about combat geometry as well. Now what the heck is combat? Combat what? Let me explain. Many encounters throw some interesting shape at you. Like this wall of chain gunners. Or this dancing party. Or this circle of fun. Things like that stick in your mind, shaping memories of the whole Sunlust experience. Let's talk about the monsters themselves. Sunlust has the familiar roster of Doom 2 enemies and doesn't alter their behavior in any way. Now, among all of them, who exactly deserves the most recognition? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's always him, isn't it? But I think there is a better candidate. Please, welcome your new best friend. I'm positive, he's secretly a good guy. And your best co-op buddy. He watches over you. You fight hordes of demons together. He helps you out when you're in trouble. And when he's in trouble, you'd better help him out too. Because that's what happens if you don't. Although, sometimes he gets mad if you forget his birthday or something. And he even calls up his brother. But hey, you guys are such good friends, you can't fight for too long. Now, let's get back to the difficulty. 
Make no mistake, sun loss is very hard. Not the hardest Doom levels have to offer, oh no, but still hard. Earlier levels don't hesitate to throw high tier enemies at you, but they are short and not very punishing. But then later levels are much bigger, they swarm in the demons. Exactly what you'd expect of the difficulty curve. And the ultimate level, the God Machine. It's just epic. It's the longest, baddest, the most brutal of them all. It looks epic and it sounds epic. If now you are intimidated by this level pack, don't be. Although quote unquote default level of difficulty in Doom is considered to be ultra violence, Sunless takes care of lower difficulties as well. There's really no shame in choosing even the lowest level and just roll with it. You'll still experience the same game, it's just more manageable now. I also like the way it's implemented. Look at this comparison. This is how much enemy count is affected by difficulty in Doom and Doom 2. Now again, looking mostly at Doom 2, these median values are kinda telling. It sure seems like a deliberate design choice. Now look at the Sunlust. Unlike Doom 2, it tends not to lower enemy count too much. It replaces them with lower tier enemies instead. The whole geometry and memorability thing I was talking about is not lost. And although not always, lower difficulty levels still demand mostly the same kind of strategies, while being less punishing. And as much as people call saving game safes coming, remember, it's still a feature. Again, there is no shame, save as much as you want, especially in the bigger levels. The last thing about the difficulty, the pistol start. Yes, Sunlass is specifically designed to be beaten level by level starting with a pistol only. But you know what else? It's also specifically designed to not. You see, most levels end normally, letting you carry your weapons and ammo to the next one. But some levels end by killing the player, deliberately forcing them back to nothing. There is even one specific level which is supposed to take away your guns. But if you win a big optional fight at the end, you get the reward and the level ends normally instead. That being said, pistol start in each level makes you earn your weapons and ammo and it adds another dimension of playing. And again, the lower difficulties are not forgotten. They generally give you powerful weapons earlier. So the Sunlust not forces, but encourages this way of playing. What about the story? Ok, I admit, not the strongest plot. But some attempts were made to make level transitions more seamless. Take a look at these three levels. First you have gothic castle hallways. But at the end of this level, out of nowhere there is a mountain of flesh. You go inside for the whole next level with this creepy atmosphere. And then it looks like you emerge on the other side. If anything, this transition tells a simple story with memorable visuals. There are more examples. Right at the end of this level, you can see how the walls continue into the next one. Or this level, it has a distinct red structure at the end. And the next one continues this red theme. It's always nice to have things like that. The last thing to talk about, the music. I have to mention, although there are a few tracks made specifically for Sunlust, most of them are not original. There are media renditions of music from other games. The music itself does not disappoint though. Original or not, every track is very fitting. It really helps that there is a variety of level themes. Tech bases. Ancient caves. Magnificent structures. It all fits together quite well. But my favorite track is not even from a level. It's from the intermission screen. Every time I beat a sunless level, I just sit back and relax for a while. Very fitting indeed. And finally the conclusion. The greatest quality of Sunlust is its strong focus on good level design. Fun, beautiful and memorable. Sure, it lacks a well written story. And the soundtrack is mostly an original. But you can really tell where all the effort went. To the most important thing in Doom. Its levels. Sunlust creators, I salute you. Thank you for this wonderful experience. And thank you, the viewers, 
I hope you enjoyed this even a little. See you around.